Victoria. I think we're going to move on to our next speaker. And our second speaker is George Zodel. Zoidel. He's a master's student in neuroscience at York University in the lab of George R. Zoidel. And his talk is on a role of Panaxin 1 channels in an experimental zebrafish model for Parkinson's disease. So whenever you're ready. Well, uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to speak here at the NeuroMatch conference. So, oh, why is it not moving? Uh, interesting. Let me try that again. All right. Yeah, there we go. So uh, Panixin-1 uh, is an integral membrane protein, uh, which is important for ATP release. And it's implicated in many different types of diseases, such as epilepsy, stroke, and inflammation through the NLRP3 inflammasome. And the hypothesis in uh, my research has been uh, that the loss of PANX1 function is modulating early stages of Parkinson's disease by affecting the dopaminergic uh, signaling and the inflammasome. So uh, for um, uh, my Parkinson's disease uh, protocol, um, I use the acute MTP protocol, um, which can take effect within a four-hour incubation period, which models the early stages of Parkinson's disease. So it looks more at the inflammation. Uh, what's so great about MTP is that it's uh, able to freely cross the blood-brain barrier, uh, where it's then converted to MPP+, plus, which can be taken up by dopaminergic nerve terminals uh, through dopamine transporters. So right here, I have my real-time uh, PCR data. Um, I've converted it into a heat map. And uh, what we found after MPTP treatment is uh, that there was a clear upregulation of uh, Parkinson's disease-related genes, uh, such as PARC7, tyrosine hydroxylase, and uh, VDAC3. We also found that there was a downregulation of uh, genes such as FOSAB and uh, circadian clock genes uh, like CRY5 and PER3. A uh, second type of experiment uh, we performed was uh, RNA-seq. And uh, we took the RNA-seq data and uh, put it into gene ontology uh, enrichment analysis, which uh, demonstrated that the inflammasome and energy metabolism were the most significantly upregulated uh, biological processes after the MTP treatment. So we took uh, the uh, regulated genes from the inflammasome and put it into a string, which is a functional protein association network analysis and it predicts which pathways are regulated through the MTP treatment. So uh, we found uh, right here in green uh, that the nf kappa b pathway uh, was affected by the MTP treatment, and uh, it's uh, activated by dopamine, which is quite critical for Parkinson's disease, and it uh, primes the NLRP3 inflammasome. Another pathway that was affected was uh, right here in red, the MAP kinase pathway, which regulates the NLRP3 inflammasome. Here in blue, we have more general um, terms which can be clustered into cell death uh, with the cas bases present. A third type of uh, experiment uh, we are doing uh, behavioral genotyping, uh, sorry, not genotyping, behavioral testing. And uh, we do this uh, in vivo through pharmacological blocking of the NLRP3 inflammasome. So uh, we're able to block punx one a through either a genetic knockout or through the use of probenicid, which is able to block uh, panixin. And uh, we can also use uh, MCC950 or INF39, which are both able to block the NRP3 HPAs. And this blocks uh, inflammation activation and uh, caspase activation. So right here um, is the behavioral data for probenicid. And uh, on the left side, you can see in blue the top long fin, which are the wild type. And on the right in orange, we have the pumps one a knockout fish. We are measuring the uh, total distance that the fish travel. Um, so we're looking at the locomotion over time periods at uh, different light intensities. So we start off in the dark and then uh, we uh, slightly ramp up the light every 10 minutes. And uh, as you can see, uh, the movement decreases uh, in the dark. And then as you um, ramp up the light, the locomotion increases. When we treat the zebrafish with uh, MTP, 
uh, the movement, uh, the log motion decreases quite significantly in the dark and in the light for both the TL and the punks one knockouts. When treated with just probenicid right here, you can see that the TL starts to resemble the punks one knockouts. And in a combined treatment of MTP and probenicid, uh, probenicid uh, seems to worsen the MTP induced uh, locomotor phenotype even further. So some of the highlights from my research so far is that uh, we demonstrated that in the acute MTP model of Parkinson's disease, the loss of function of uh, Parkinson's one channels in the zebrafish significantly upregulated uh, the biological processes of the inflammasome and energy metabolism, demonstrated um, an upregulation of uh, Parkinson's disease related genes and a downregulation of circadian clock genes. And uh, we demonstrated that uh, genetic and pharmacological targeting of Panixin-1 worsens the MTP-induced behavioral gene phenotype as seen in the probenicid. Also, uh, we demonstrated that the pharmacological targeting of the inflammasome is insufficient to alter the MTP-induced behavioral phenotype. Anyways, uh, thank you for listening to my presentation and uh, yeah, thank you to everybody in the lab. Awesome, thank you, George. Um, would you mind going back to the the previous slide? Um, so we, perfect. So if you have any questions for George, please put them in the Q and A. Um, I have a quick question. So you mentioned um, that you know, you d demonstrated this upregulation of Parkinson's related genes and downregulation of circadian clock genes. Yeah. So is there? I'm not as familiar with Parkinson's disease as in terms of genes and all that, but like, um, is there a relationship between sleep and Parkinson's disease that's well noted? Yeah, um, so as I say right here, um, the circadian arrhythmias are very common in Parkinson's disease patients. So um, they have uh, problems uh, with sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. All right, so we have a Q&A question. So the question is, uh, how old were the zebrafish in these experiments? If they were still larvae, you are manipulating things during development. How easily translatable do you think this is to Parkinson's disease, which is usually adult onset? Oh, yes, that's a good question. So uh, for my experiment specifically, I use uh, six-day-old um, zebrafish. So they're still larvae, but uh, they are fully developed. So um, the brain is fully developed. So um, there is no difference to the adult zebrafish brain. So um, it uh, translates uh, more to the early stages of Parkinson's disease um, when uh, what I'm looking at. Since I'm doing the MTP treatment, I'm uh, more uh, looking at the inflammation part, which uh, can later on lead to Parkinson's disease. So um, I actually have a slide about this. Um, later on. Yeah, here. Oh. Okay, there we go. Um, it's, uh, there's a new uh, hypothesis that uh, the Parkinson's actually originates through inflammation um, in the gut, and then this inflammation travels to the brain. So I'm more focused on the inflammation part. And uh, this inflammation can form Lewy bodies in the brain, and um, this uh, spreads throughout the brain and causes uh, damage, which is seen later on in Parkinson's disease uh, when dopaminergic neurons are destroyed and there's neural degeneration. Yeah. Great. Um, Victoria says that she has a question. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, I know some people studying how um, how mitochondria might be involved in Parkinson's disease. So it was interesting to see that kind of convergent uh, evidence here. Do you know what, um, well, first of all, do you think the mitochondria are involved in Parkinson's disease at all? Or like, how does that relate to this uh, Lewy body? And then maybe another separate question is what does Pink's one uh, do normally? Okay, that's a good question. So. Um... MTP actually inhibits um, 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 the electron transport chain at the um, second part. Um, oh my God, I forgot the name of it. 
but um, yeah, it's a uh, uh, inhibits um, the second part of the electron transport chain, so it inhibits um, ATP production. So yes, uh, mitochondria is uh, very critical in this um, model for Parkinson's disease, since we're stopping the production of um, ATP. And uh, the normal physiological function of uh, Panexin 1 is that it's an uh, ATP channel. So uh, under uh, physiological uh, conditions, uh, it is able to release uh, ATP to the outside of the cell, which can then attach to pronergic uh, receptors that uh, can cause uh, pronergic signaling downstream. And then that can cause um, behavioral and um, genotypic uh, changes. Thank you. Great Thanks. talk. Any other questions? So I guess I, I just have a question about your research in general. Like, is is both you talked about you know your interest in exploring the gut brain axis? Is most of this with this specific ion channel or I'm sorry protein channel, or is it with um, with other mechanisms beyond that? Um, well, right now um, I'm looking at Panexin 1 um, and it's also expressed in the gut. So um, it's expressed in uh, a lot of different tissues. So um, this could play a role in these early stages of the gut brain axis um, and the theory that has been uh, put out. Awesome. Great. 